actually fold down to make it a flat bed, which is really kind of cool. And we have the black and white, or black and yellow. Yeah. I'm going colorblind It's now. like a bumblebee. It looks like the reverse bumblebee. Yeah, it is, yeah. All right. Thank you all for tuning in. And once again, I would like to say thank you, thank you, thank you. If you have subscribed to their channel, if you haven't, please do so now. I'll wait. You're going to wait, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're going to wait. No, and also we just like to say uh, happy holidays to everybody that is coming up. So Merry Christmas. Yeah, enjoy the time with your family. I'll be enjoying my time with my warehouse. <laughs> we'll be back here next Wednesday on the 27th, two yes. days after Christmas. We're going to be working on this again, only we do something totally different. Yeah, same but different. How do you like that? <laughs> um, besides that, you know, just real quick here, uh, we got some classes coming up. Our schedule is up for 2024. We have 10 classes coming up across the United States. And you can get more information by going to drbeasleys.com. Look for a text link that says classes and just click on it. And you can get all the information there, like dates, locations, and prices. You need to get international classes. That way then you need to have a cameraman go along oh, with you. Wax so stock. Way, yeah, the wax stock there. Wax That's what we need to go to wax stock. So... This we're not touching. Nope. We're definitely not. That looks really nice. Nope. We're touching this. This is and jacked up. This <laughs> jacked up is being polite. It's <laughs> really bad. This paint is bad. There's overspray. There's bad body work. Bad body work. Uh, solvent pop. You name it. Scratches. I mean, it's just. Well, this is a rental car at her. So this is, you know, drive it like you stole it. Well, I, every <laughs> rental that I do. I rent a race car. Rent a race car. All right, I'm going to go over thing. here. Why don't you go over okay. there and then let's get this show on the road. Okay. So this is a Hertz Special Edition 2020 Camaro SS, and a um, good friend of mine just recently purchased this. Uh, he got a good, really, he got a really good deal, except that it needs some paint correction work. Now, a few of the panels on this have been repainted, and the body work is actually um, is kind of bled through into the base coat and into the clear coat, so you can see where the bondo work was done on the outer surface of the paint. And some of this can probably be corrected through dry sanding or wet sanding. I'm going to show you dry sanding today. Uh, this is going to be a fairly in-depth segment right now, so I'm just going to jump right into it. Um, and I'll just kind of go over the products as we get to them. But the first thing you want to do, if you're going to do, first of all, let me just say, say this about sanding. 99.9% .9 of all sanding is done on custom paint. So this has been repainted. That's custom paint. Uh, we took a paint thickness gauge and measured it. It's a lot thicker than the, the factory paint on here. Uh, you should not be sanding factory paint. Factory paint is about as thin as a post-it note. And I always like to tell people this. You got to remember when, when you're doing sanding and buffing on car paint, sanding takes off some paint, compounding is going to take off some paint, polishing is going to take a little paint off. And the last thing you want to do is turn your pad over and see the base coat because that means you went through the clear coat. So that's why none of us should really be sanding um, factory finishes. And even if you're so good that you could sand it down, say with something like a really high grit, say 5,000, and compound it and polish it, and you don't go through anywhere and it, on the edges, the corners, the raised body lines, you probably have left that paint so thin that now it's going to suffer premature clear coat failure. So you're not really doing the customer uh, the owner of the car a favor. So keep that in mind. But this is custom paint. And then the reason we sand paint is to flatten the paint out to create a show car finish or, or sometimes we call it a mirror finish. <laughs> to fix the, the painter's <laughs> mistakes. <laughs> fix the painter's <laughs> mistakes is another good reason. Uh, so uh, when you're trying to create a swirl free show car finish, you're trying to create a finish that when you look into it, it reflects back your image like a mirror. And the term that's used for this is called DOI, distinction of image. A mirror has 100% DOI. This has about 70% DOI right now. So we're going to try to bring that up. But you do that by sanding. And what sanding does, it flattens the surface out. Of course, then when you compound and polish, you restore gloss, which restores reflectivity. And that's what the process pretty much entails. So the first thing that you want to do is, um, I always tell people to do a baggie test. And, and the reason why is because I don't know where this car's been after it got painted, but it could just have contamination simply from just being outside. Uh, but a lot of times, anytime you get a, um, anytime you get a custom paint job, uh, there's overspray in the air at body shops, you know? So a lot of times, uh, they may be painting the car in the booth, but you might have old man Bob in the body shop putting a guide coat on, and it drifts over onto your car that just came out of the booth. Well, so, we can actually, I can show that right here. There's, if you look right there that's oh, overspray that's overspray so that's what he's kind of talking about a little bit in fact years ago i wrote an article this is the title 
the most common place to get overspray paint is the body shop because they're spraying paint there. Anyway, so I just did the baggie test. The paint feels like 40 grit sandpaper. So this is the Dr. Beasley's prep wash. So the area I'm going to sand here just real quick, I'm going to go ahead and clay this. Now some of you are saying, well, Mike, why clay? Why not just sand off the overspray? Well, you can, and th that's a perfectly legit way to do it. Can you hear that? As I get closer with I'll get closer. <laughs> it's really rough. Uh, but here's what's going to happen. Is, is the sanding discs I'm showing here, uh, they're not cheap. And when you sand off the overspray, you're basically going to toast your sanding disc. Or your you're going to clog sheet. them up. And you're going to clog it up really fast. So instead, use something that's, you know, reusable like this clay mitt and just get all that overspray off, you know, mechanically, and then you don't have to worry about it. Oh, wow. You can hear that right there. You sand it with a Brillo pad? <laughs> oh, wow. It's pretty bad. Anyway, for this, you know, you don't really just want to, you know, get the majority off. It's just a more intelligent way to approach the process and overall. economical yeah and economical exactly I can hear that and I'm about five feet away so it's definitely more overspray on this horizontal surface than the vertical that both are fairly contaminated well that makes sense everything and falls I'm down. pushing I'm pushing hard I'd say 30 or 40 pounds like I'm really laying into this you want to show them the blend line while nope, I'm doing I can this do that. So a blend line is where they make the repair uh, and they don't paint the entire car. So the they, what they do is they spray the base coat and then they spray the clear coat. And at some point, it kind of just ends up in the middle of a panel. And you can see the difference between the factory paint and the custom paint. And there's usually a jagged edge like that, and that's called a blend line. Yeah, Mike and I were asking why they had the blend line here when they could have just painted it all the way down. <laughs> Yeah, you here. It wouldn't take it wouldn't <laughs> take more than another teaspoon of paint just to run it to an to an edge, so you don't have that blend line right in the middle of a panel. Okay, so that has been clayed and removed. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to talk about um, doing a test spot. Okay. Um, I've already done a test spot, but I just wanted to talk about this. Years ago. Um, me and a bunch of my friends at McGuire's were tasked with sanding down and buffing out a car for a TV show. It was a pilot. So a bunch of us all showed up. They're shooting the show. As soon as they're done, uh, we went to start sanding and buffing this car. And I was kind of the new guy, so I kind of stood back, you know. And I let these seasoned experts, these professionals, go in there. I was going to watch what they were going to do. And here's what they were going to do. They were just going to start out sanding the car. And I let them go. I let them go. Finally, I said, Stop. How about we do a test spot first, a sanding test spot. And here's what this means. Here's why you do it. You, you don't know if the paint is hard or soft. So before you sand down an entire car and then find out when you go to buff it that the paint is like rock hard and it's really hard, maybe impossible to get your sanding marks out, find out in a small area first, just like you do a paint correction test spot or a gel coat test spot. Dial in your process and make sure you can get your sanding marks out. And the reason I teach this is because I had a friend that painted a Ferrari, he's actually a Dino, and he called me up and says, Mike, I can't get my sanding marks out. And he was using everything from 3M. I was using everything from Meguiar's. In fact, I had their Nikon 3000 grit sanding paper. I showed up at a shot. We re-sanded all his work on just a flat. A flat is basically the deck lid. It's almost like this, completely flat. So the easiest panel there is to sand off. All the rest had curves and scoops and stuff, really complicated. I resanded with 25 and 3,000 and then used the most aggressive wool pad, rotary buffer, and compound, and I couldn't get my sanding marks out. We could get most out, but there were tracers just everywhere. And machine sanding discs had not been invented yet, like 3M Trizac or the Eagle Abrasives here. So he looked at me and says, what am I going to do? And I said, you're going to repaint the car. <laughs> and, and that's we had to repaint the car. But he sanded the entire car down, then found out he couldn't get his sanding marks out. So that's why I teach people to do a test spot before they sand down unknown paint. Because top coat hardness is an unknown uh, factor. Now, I did a test spot here, so I sanded down, buffed it out, and I found out this paint's pretty soft, so I'm not too worried about getting my sand marks out. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to talk about how we edge a panel. And, um, and, and body shop guys, you guys are pros, you do this for a living, you do it however you want to. But I like to show people how to be very safe. And so um, if we look right here, this is a raised body line. And up here, I'm going to just sand from here to here. And here's an edge. You've got a raised body line and edge. And I teach this technique called the rule of thumb. So I want to keep my sanding marks about a thumbnail distance away from this raised body line and about a thumbnail distance away from this, this, this edge.
And here's why. Because you do not want to put a spinning wool pad. You don't want to put sanding marks where you can't put your wool pad to pull your sanding marks out. You're going to burn through the edge. And um, that's the last thing you want to do is, in this case, find black paint on here. But what I mean by that is if I sand right up to the edge, that means I'm going to have to bring this buffer and sand right on the edge and there's a good chance I'm going to burn through that edge. So I teach the rule of thumb and my joke is this reason why is because everywhere I go I take my thumb. <laughs> so, I can, bum, bum. <laughs> so I can hold it there and just kind of it's just a visual gauge of how far to stay away. So that's called edging a panel. So what I usually do is I edge the panel first and say a thumbnail distance away and edging a panel means I'm going to sand all the edges first because those are the more tedious, the more intricate areas to sand. And then I'm going to come back out in the major flat area and sand it and tie it in with the areas that I edged. And if you take my class on this, of course, it will really make a lot more sense, but I'll show you that. Okay, so before we get started, let me just talk about the Eagle Abrasives dry sanding system. So Eagle Abrasives, and, and the, the, the full name is Eagle Abrasives by Kovacs. Okay, so they make great sanding sheets, which is what I'm going to use today. And these come with two to a sheet and you just rip them apart and they're pre-cut and measured to fit their sanding blocks and their interface pads. Brilliant! It's, it's a really well thought out system. Okay. <laughs> More people need to do that. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's actually a really nice system. I used to teach wet sanding for, I don't know, decades. Uh, and wet sanding is fine too, but here's what I like about dry sanding is you just take a clean dry towel, you wipe away the area you're sanding, you can instantly tell if you've removed the orange pill or the surface texture to your satisfaction and then move on or say, no, I need to sand some more and keep going. When you wet sand, you have to dry, usually blow. I mean, you, you got to get the surface dry so you can really gauge how much of the orange pill or the surface texture is still left on the surface. So it's just faster. And then you, and just, you don't have that big of a mess like at your uh, feet. It's not, you don't have slurry running yeah. down all the cracks and crevices all the floor. Okay, so then, then real quickly, a Kovax also makes different types of interface pads, which is also really intelligent. So this is a hard, and if I, let's see, it's called um, interface hard Interface Extra Hard M. So that's the part number. It's kind of a weird part number. But this is, this is really hard. And this is, this is where pros get in there. They really want to flatten out. They want to start with the, it's called hard blocking. And then they make like a medium density. And then they make a ultra soft density. And so for, fu for final finishing, you use this one. For coming back after the hard disk, you use the medium disk. So there's kind of an a interface pad for every aspect of the sanding process. And then um, at this time, they don't actually make any thinner blocks. I usually buy the Meguiar's E7200s and cut them to the size I want them to be. But um, this actually works. You can take this and I actually just cut my own sanding discs and then uh, cut my own uh, sanding sheets out of a full sheet. And I took one of these discs and just took a pair of scissors and cut it up. And now I've got a nice thin sanding disc that I can use to get into thin panels. Okay, so uh, the first thing I guess I want to do is just go ahead and do some sanding. We're going to start out with a 1500 grit. And this is the Acelix sanding disc. They got different names. They got, they got the Acelix, the Super Buff, and the Tolex sanding sheets. Okay, so I'm going to come over here. And the first thing I'm going to do is pick up this dirty towel and get rid of it. My uh, wool pad left a little residue there. Okay. Okay, so then what I want to do is I want to edge this panel. Now, the hardest part is, is sanding next to an edge. So here's what you do for that. Take, I'm going to put my fingers right here in this nice angled part right here. And I want to just come down here. And I'm right-handed, so this is a little trickier. And remember my rule of thumb. So I'm just going to, I'm lifting this up a little bit. So I'm not sanding the whole area back here. I just want to concentrate on this area right here. And I'm going to move this down the panel in a very tight pattern, which means I'm just moving it over a little bit, like an eighth of an inch at each stroke. And I'll show you what you don't want to do, which is make M's or W's, as I like to call them. Okay, so now let's take a dry clean towel. We'll wipe that off. And there, this section here is sanded. You can also see the paint. So when you sand something clear, clear coat, it turns opaque or white. Then you just take your dry towel and wipe that off. And you want to always clean these, otherwise you're gonna, your sanding is going to become irregular. You could increase the risk for tracers. Okay, so there I've edged this panel there. I'm going to call that good. Now I want to edge this panel. Again, I'm going to stay about a thumbnail distance away clean off my sanding paper. Now I can start, I can start really getting some stroke going on here. Now, you always want to sand a part that's man, a, a size that's manageable. And by that I mean, 
the further my arm gets away from my body, the more I've got to focus on pushing down here to maintain the same pressure that I can push down here when my arm is really close. It's really easy to push down hard here. It takes more concentration to push that same amount of pressure here the further I get away. So usually something about a foot long. Okay, so then, and then once, once you kind of get into the groove, you actually want to get that sanding block going because inertia is your friend. It just keeping the block moving helps you to keep the block moving. Okay, so if you look at that, that 1500 grit can just completely flatten that panel out. I do want to get a little bit closer, so I'll just come up here and... Now, how much force are you pushing down? Uh, I'd say this is about 5, 10 pounds. You know, you can really feel that. Look at the pain. I mean, the 1500 cuts fast. The Eagle Abrasives, they make a very high-quality sanding disc. Okay, so there is a kind of a a curve right here because we're going to try to keep this about 45 minutes. I'm just going to go ahead and say, well, I could go all the way down here. Well, I need to edge this part if I'm going to do the whole thing. Maybe I won't buff the whole thing up, but I'll sand the whole thing. Well, you got to sand I mean, you got to buff it and sand it sometime, so. Okay. So that's edged to that edge. Now, I got to say a thumbnail distance away from here. So I'm just going to come down here, and again, inertia is my friend. That is completely flat. Now I've got a raised body line here. I'm not going to sand this in, this in this video, but you would use a thinner disc basically to do that. So again, keeping with a thumbnail distance away. So basically what you're teaching them is to work from, in, basically sand inside the lines. You sand inside the lines and go around and hit all the hard. It's, it's not that it's hard, it's just that you've got to be focused because you don't want to sand on that raised body line or on that edge because then when you come back, you've got to compound on that edge or that raised body line. And with a spinning pad on a rotary, you really risk um, burning through the edge, you know. And I can tell you from firsthand experience, it's no fun to call the owner and say, hey, I went through your, your clear coat. We've got to repaint the panel. Okay, so now I'm going to come up here and come back here and edge this part. And here you can start to see some of that poor body work. Oh, you're going to see it as soon as you get back down. See the line there? Can you yeah, capture you're that? Really see it back here. Yeah, there's some major body work. Okay, so now I've, I've went around the raised body line, the edge, this edge, and this raised body line. Now all i got to do is knock out the big, flat, easy spot. Okay, so we'll come down here. And, okay, I'm going to stop yep. so you can capture that. You see you got it? Lines. See the lines? That's bad body work. That's, that's the prep work. So that's the Bondo and any sanding work they did in there. And then it kind of bleeds through the primer, the base coat, and the clear coat. And we see it, and it doesn't look good. So that's why we're here sanding this, is to knock that flat. Because uh, when they started doing... That's the reason why that. all, body line, all body shops will tell you that the paint job starts with the body work. <laughs> it's always the prep, the prep work. work. Yeah. And we try to capture this with just our cameras and video, but you can see it in person, but you really couldn't see it until you start to sand it. Well, you could see it, but it's, it, this makes it a lot, cap, more, could, <laughs> a lot more evident. Okay, so it's gone right here. Now I'm going to come up here, and we're going to find some more body work, I think. Oh, you're going to be finding a little body bit right work there. all over. Okay, but anyway, that's the point I'm trying to make is edge your panel first. That's the hard, intricate work, and then come back and just knock out the big, flatter areas. And this is the real easy part. Right there, see it? Now, are you worrying about how line? much you're overlapping on the previous part? Oh, let me, t uh, yeah, well, yeah, you want to overlap a little bit in the previous stuff, just a little bit, just for what's called UMR, Uniform Material Removal, because that equates to uniform appearance at the end of the day. So, but I also want to teach that thing I called about a tight, a tight pattern. So I'm going to come up the panel here and look how I'm just moving my sanding disc over just a little bit at a time. Okay, that's called a sanding with a tight pattern. Okay, very tight. Now that's what you want to do. Now let me show you what you don't want to do. You don't want to make M's or W's. You don't want to be like this. <laughs> Big wide pattern. Okay, keep it tight. 
Now, I'll fix that when I switch over to the lighter grit. Okay, then if I stand back here and look, there's still some shiny paint right here. So you're basically look taking at, that down. See that body work there, those lines? So basically what you're doing is you're taking it down to where it's a consistent dullness. You don't want to have any high yeah. spot, uh, shinier spots. You want it all the same dullness. Con uh, yeah, and I would actually say a, continu uh, a uniform flatness. There you go. Yeah. That's the words I, I was looking for. It would be completely flat. Okay, and look, if this is a show car, I could go a lot further, but um, I know my good friend Jason's watching, and I don't want to buy him a paint job, so look, we're going to get a good, we're not going to get a great. Uh, when you guys go out and watching this and you do your own, you guys want to get great, you get great, but uh, here's, here's a saying I came up with years ago. Words cannot describe the heart-sinking feeling that overcomes you when you discovered you sanded or buffed through the clear coat. And they're done that. Okay, yeah. Okay, so now if you look up here, I've got, I've got the 15, I got these backwards. Here's a 1500 disc. Here's a 2000. Paper, or sheets, they're called sheets. Uh, rounds are discs. And um, I started with 1500. I'm just going to bump right up here to the 2500 and refine. Okay. So now I'm going to do the same thing I did. So I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to let me get my towel. And for, for mm. those of you that are new to sanding, and you like go to Lowe's and see the 80 grit sandpaper, <laughs> that's for wood, not for paint. <laughs> I have some over in the drawer there. Remember a week ago when we did the uh, louvers and the intricate yeah. places? I shaped some foam pads with some uh, 60 grit. Or you can make foam pads, custom foam pads. With okay, 80. so now I'm just edging this panel right here. See, I'm taking a lot less paint off, but I'm refining. What I'm doing is I'm refining the 15 to 2500, moving down this panel using a very tight pattern. And when you're sanding, probably the most important thing you need to learn how to do is refine your sanding marks 100%. Okay. And if you can notice, you're starting to see a little bit of a sheen come back. A little bit of a sheen, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Okay, now I'm gonna come down here and do this part, and it's kind of hard for me to get down here, so I probably got my melon in the way. No, nope. I'm down underneath it. I'm actually pretty close to that line, but you know my motto, don't you? It's not my car. Yeah. Okay, guys, see that, that body work there? Let me hit that again. Now I'm going to start moving up the panel. But I, when I teach in my classes on this, Yancey is the hardest thing to do, but the most important thing to do is refine 100% of your sanding marks. Because if you don't, when you come back with a wool pad and start pulling your sanding marks out, all the stuff that's refined, so shallow, it's going to buff out easy. Everything that's deep, you're going to start fighting it. You're going to heat the paint up and you risk, you risk twisting it or burning it or going back and re-sanding it. So you have to focus on what you're doing. So you sand. Every single spot that you sand, you re-sand with the less aggressive grit, finer grit. With this um, 2500, you can see even with 15, I didn't completely level it. No. But by the time we buff it out, you, you really won't be able to see it unless you know where to look. Okay. And, you know, I, I have friends that work in body shops, and I always tell people if you really want to get good at sanding, get a job at a body shop. You'll start, <laughs> yeah. First, you'll start out doing things like sweeping the floor, <laughs> taking the garbage out. Then they'll have you do things like pull bumpers off and fenders off. And at some point... Oh, right there, you can definitely see the difference between the two. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. That's 15. That's right, you, you point, because I'm going to bring my okay. finger in ready to call okay. it. So here's 2,500, here's 15. See yep. how this is starting to get a, what's called a sheen. Yep. Okay, it's not quite a reflection, but it's definitely a sheen. Um, but yeah, get us off at a body shop. And, you know, <laughs> the guy that's got to do the sanding and buffing in the body shop world, that's kind of like the worst job. The best job the is the painter. Labor. Everybody wants to be the painter. You know, you put the white bunny suit on and go into the booth and paint the gun and then take Before the rest. Before you wipe that, let me get a shot of that. Take the rest you of the really day off. I think, I, well, I think I'm sweating on my work here. Okay. Right. See, there you can see. The body work. The body work. And we haven't taken it right all the way out. There. 
If I dropped down to 1,000, I probably could. But see, the thing about this is, is like, I don't know who painted this, and I don't know how much clear they put on there. And again, my goal is to improve it, possibly not completely remove it. And the owner's going to be more than happy with it's that. It's definitely going to improve it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think I need to come back here and just do a little bit more. And this is what I would call a manageable size. So if you look, it's almost about the size... This is, a, a, this is, I think, a 18 inches wide, so, so it's a manageable size. Okay, so that's how you do that. And then if you come up here, you see where the paint gets thinner up here? This is where you would use, you know, what I like to do is just make my own custom blocks. And in this case, I just took one of their interface pads and cut it and cut the sheet. And then I can just come up here, and you want to try to keep this as flat as you can. and sand these thinner panels down. And as I'm sanding this, you can see some of the imperfections in the paint there. But I'm not going to do the whole thing, but that's how I would handle that. Same thing up here. And you could cut this to whatever the thickness is you need. Okay? Right. So, got to think outside the box. That's why I always got a pair of scissors with me. Okay, so that is typically just how you uh, machine or hand dry sand. Um, it's well worth the investment to invest in quality sanding discs. I think, I think the industry knows you, that... You'll e want to spend money. Eagle Braces has got a recognized name. Okay, so now the next thing we need to do, Yancey, is we got to take those sanding marks out because I don't think the owner wants a matte finish. Well, that's one way to get him to do it, matte finish. Okay, so uh, Flex PE150 Rotary. And always, always spur your pad because you don't know it might have one piece of dirt on there. I always like to run it all the way around the back, all the way into the center. Really clean that thing good. Um, if you have one abrasive particle in the face of your pad, whether it's foam, wool, microfiber, whatever it is, what you end up doing with the rotor is you put what's called an arc scratch in. It's usually not a complete circle. It's like part of a circle, and it'll be all over the paint job. So clean your pad often. And they're a pain. Okay. Now we're going to use the Dr. Beasley's NSP 150. Now, this is a very concentrated uh, abrasive technology. It's actually perfectly round spheres that are 1.5 microns in diameter. And because it's concentrated, you don't use it like old school compounds and polishes where you basically just paint the stuff on or throw a big strip on, which is kind of what I'm used to. So I've got three. <laughs> so Mike's learning how to do stuff. <laughs> I've had to retrain myself. Those are, what, some people think that's in the, in the Beasley's world, so that's pretty sick. But you've got to remember this is dry wool. It's going to absorb some of that. So I've got to start off with a little bit extra. I'm just going to mush this around. The swish technique. The smooshy technique. And then um, I'll show you some techniques for using a rotary. So I know a lot of people say hold the pad flat. And look, I can do it. You can do it when the pad's dry. As the pad becomes wet, what happens is part of this pad right here might yank or it might yank here. And it starts yanking you all over the place. So you can't buff evenly. You can't buff smoothly. And it's going to tire you out. What's easier, let me put this on three, to just go up on edge, OK? Not extreme edge, unless you're doing an, an actual edge, but just start, and then just start running the polisher back and forth. It's very easy to control, and it's a lot easier on you. Now, some people will say, well, Mike, when you go up on edge, won't you be putting in a deeper hologram scratch? And I would say, well, that would be true if I was using caveman abrasive technology, but I'm not. I'm using state-of-the-art and we like to use the term breakthrough. There's nothing else like it on the market. Okay, so I just buffed that one section. Let's throw a swirl finder light on there and see if I got my... There's going to be holograms, but I just want to see if I got my sanding marks out. And yes, 100% out of that little bit of buffing. Then they kick in back here. And of course, they kick in back there. So holograms is normal because you got to remember, anytime you're using a fiber pad, those fibers cut oh, the paint. Oh, you want me to zoom in on yeah, that? Yeah, see the fibers? The fibers cut the paint. That's, that's why you, it's never a problem starting with wool, but don't finish with wool. Switch over to foam. Okay, so let's get back down here and do some more buffing. I'm going to teach you a technique called buffing off an edge. This is an important technique that will keep you safe. Okay, so here's an example. Here is an edge, and the way this pad is spinning, if I buff this way, look at Yanks my buff around. I'm buffing into the edge. If I tilt it and come off on this side, 
this pad is buffing off this ra radius line here. Now it, it's easy. So learn how to buff off an edge. And I can show you the same thing here. Let me open the door. Okay, so here is an edge. Now if I want to come up, if I come up like this, you're gonna grab. I'm buffing into that edge. Instead, I'm gonna grab some park. I'm gonna come this way. And that pad is just ro rolling right off that edge. So it's a lot safer. And of course, it ain't gonna yank the buffer out of your hand. Anyway, that's just another thing we teach in our classes here. Is rotary, rotary polisher techniques. You can go ahead and close that door, Yancy. Now I'm kind of tied the whole thing together with a few large overlapping passes. And here's another technique you can use. Instead of, instead of using your arms, you can actually kind of lock your arms in place and just roll your leg, you know? You got total control over that pad. And I always teach people, you know, I have people in my class, hold the rotary away from you, then I grab it and just yank them all over. Then I say, now hold it close to you, and I can't hardly budge them. So you have leverage over the tool when you hold it close to yourself versus far away. Okay, let me... Um, let me inspect that. Let me clean that up a little bit. Okay, there's still sanding marks along the edge, some down here, and some right up there. So let me grab those real quick. This would be a lot easier if I were able to sit down and get low <laughs> instead of bending over. But I don't mind. Okay. I'm going to put a little part there, a little part there, and a little, little part right there. All right, go to the crack. I'm moving. Okay. Um, I'll just be real careful here. This is called edge work with the eight inch pad. <laughs> Wait, don't you always do edge work with an eight inch pad? Most of the time. But if you want to, you could get a tool like the hybrid, the Rupes hybrid or nano, or you could grab a tool like the Flex Pixie and put a one inch pad on there. Here, I got one I can show you. You could come around and just keep this focused pad like this all along that edge. Um, it's a lot more time consuming, but that is probably a, a good way to approach it. Um, I like to use, I like to get one tool in my hand and stay with it. Instead of stopping, grabbing a different tool, starting. Time is money. Okay. Okay, let's see how that looks. I want to be sensitive to making people watch grass grow or paint dry or water boil. Got any water other, boil. You got any other cliches there that talk about watching things that take a long time and are tedious? Okay, sand marks gone, sand marks gone, sand marks gone, sand marks gone. A little bit of sand marks right there. Oh, sand marks right here. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. Slacker. And this is, by the way, is you've got to have something like this. Lake Country Swirl Finder Light Slacker. <laughs> Where were they? Right here? Yeah. That okay. bottom corner. Oops. This, this is called finger painting, so I'm just going to paint <laughs> some on there. And I never waste products, so I'm going to put some back on there. Um, yeah, slacker. Okay. <laughs> Okay. 
Kind of clean this up. Okay, let's see how that looks. One time I taught this class with uh, Jason Rose at the Rupes Training Center there in Colorado. And in the class, we had a student that had just had, I think it was an Escalade, wrecked and repainted. And we got to a point where we were just about out of time. Gone, 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 gone. Everything's gone. But my Santa Mark's kicking. I'm not going to do that right there. No, we can do it before and after. Okay, anyway, uh, we were running out of time. We needed to culminate the class. And, you know, everybody there's kind of learned. And so in order to wrap things up, I went ahead and just grabbed a rotary and pulled all the sanding marks out on the passenger side door and fender and then buffed it out with the Bigfoot 18. And then I stood back and watched everybody look for sanding marks and holograms. Uh, There was nothing, nothing there. You go, big man. Oh, 150. Ken, I'll switch over to the... 95. Okay, we're switching over to a normal now. So this is, yes, yeah, so this is the Flex Beast. You can tell by aluminum head, eight millimeter, gear driven. You can listen to the gears. It's growling at you, it's the beast, Hard. okay? It's so important to have these pads completely centered up. And then I'm gonna go with the 95. And this is, a, this is called a cutting pad, but it's basically just an aggressive polishing pad. Okay, four pea sized drops. Again, concentrated product, not like old school stuff. Now, smoosh, 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 smoosh. Come back and grab that, put it a little bit here. Okay. People always ask me, what speed are you on? I am on, I'm a six guy. If this went to seven, I'd be on seven. Spinal tap. So. <laughs> If you guys notice, watch how Mike is using his leg instead of his arm. That's two. Now he's counting his passes. Three. Four. Five. Six. Can you tell him what I'm doing? Yep. Seven. There's eight solid cross uh, your, Hold on, before you, oh, you, no, nah, I should have did just one spot, so that way I could have showed the difference between, never mind, that's good. Okay. That's uh, eight solid section passes, now I'll repeat it here. That's one. I'm gonna divide this into two sections. Two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I got this section down here. One, two. Three, four, again, watch five, how he's bracing himself and using his leg. Six. To move the polisher. Seven. Or smarter, not harder. There's eight. Eight solid section passes over that area. No black paint. <laughs> Yay! No black paint. Oh, let's check. I'm going to do like a little finishing pass mm. to kind of sh- that whole section together. Okay. Very little product. So now I'll just do the whole thing. See how he's using his leg? Good technique. Side shot. <clears throat> I okay. thought you were going to flip it like a gun. <laughs> <sighs> I'd be like, oh, you, I'm impressed if you could do that. Okay, now I'm going to switch over to this 
foam polishing pad, and I'm going to bump over to the NSP45. All right. And again, P size drops. A little bit bigger than P. This pad's dry, so. Okay. Are you working up a sweat like me? Yep. Yeah, you are not. Okay. Now, for this, I'm going to start out pushing hard, but I'm going to reduce my pressure as I go through it. Okay, that was one. Five. Now I'm going to just reduce my pressure a little bit here. Light pressure. Last pass. No black paint. Aw, good boy. Okay. All right, now the reveal. Bom, bom, bom. Okay. Then when you can, grab your light. Yeah, I'm going to hit this with a little bit of a spray shine, just to make sure there's no product smears, because I don't want everybody judging me. Just one spray. This black paint so hard to perfect with these bright lights. Okay. Okay, here we go. Whew. Boom. There's a smudge right there. But look how, I don't know what you're seeing, that is flawless. No swirls, no sandy marks. Hi, Mom. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a process that works on any paint system. By the way, see that uh, GTO back there? GTO. That thing, That thing has single-stage paint. It actually has a lot of scratches in it. I've already buffed out the glass, the windshield on that, and I buffed out the paint. It went to a shop, and after they did some work on the carburetor and the steering column, someone thought they would do the owner a favor. By wiping it down. Take a towel and wipe it down and scratched the heck out of it. So now I got to redo it. And that may be a class coming up in the future. But I'll tell you one thing. When I originally did that, I was using another company's compounds and polishes. And they removed all the defects and completely micromarred the paint because it's soft. The hardest thing there is is to create abrasive technology that works on a wide spectrum of paint types. Not only the softest, but the hardest. And you get that with the Dr. Beasley's NSB primers. Okay, I worked up my sweat. <laughs> <sighs> and what's funny is I have to do the whole car. <laughs> so, well, now you know what to do. Yeah, that was just an elaborate test spot. But you know, the, you know, look. Um, one of the things I I uh, tell people when they take our our big three day class is the class that covers dry sanding, and I bring in real street rods, real muscle cars, things that have custom paint jobs. We sand them down and buff them out by hand. We follow it by machine, and that's going to be next week. I'm going to show you how to use the Flex FX3411 cordless DA sander and the Flex Pixie as a three inch mini sander with the six millimeter drive unit that Flex actually made specifically because I said I needed one, and now you can all get one. <laughs> Aww. Um, but um, 
uh, where was I going with that? And in the classes, what I teach you is, look, if you take our class, you know, you're not going to become an expert at sanding and buffing in one class. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a foundation to build on, okay, using the right techniques, the right tools, and the head knowledge. And, and hands-on teaches you mumble, muscle memory. You know what to do. You don't go out to the garage and go, hmm, I bought this stuff. What do I do? So it's a very good class. In fact, if you go up to drbeasies.com and click on blog, it's one of the top articles up there right now. 600 pictures on what a real detailing class looks like. And when you click on that link, you're going to see the class did six cars in a boat, including sending down a 1965 Ford Galaxy. And there's not a single chair. There's no one sitting. Everybody's on their feet working on cars the whole time. No PowerPoint. It's, it was really a fun class. Right. Okay, questions? All right. I will be the voice from the nether. Get your questions in. We have about, we'll give about 15 minutes. Okay, I'm good with that. Um, then for all you Instagram people out there, uh, I, Victor's been copying your stuff over just because of the way that the software is. We're not able to post your comments and stuff over here. So if you see posts coming up from us, that's from Instagram. Just want to let you all know. So, but your questions will get answered. So let's jump right in it, shall we? No black paint. No black paint, yay, there we go. <laughs> okay, we have optical clarity detailing. Happy holidays, appreciate you guys doing the videos. Any idea when Flex 6mm part is becoming available? You know, I, I sent the link to this class to um, the president of Flex, the head engineer of Flex, Chris Metcalf and John Carnival. And um, if they're watching, maybe they can chime in. If not, I'll find out. Last time I heard it was they're on their way. So that's all I can tell you. I got six of my own, so I'm okay. <laughs> well, look at you. Uh, we have our good buddy, Michael O'Neill. Take care of that red eye up there, buddy. Uh, good afternoon, my friends. He's my fellow Dodge guy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Uh, you guys both have the disease. We do have the disease. <laughs> okay, here's the first question coming in from Instagram. And like I said, this is the, the software just released where we can go live on Instagram, so that's all new. So thank you. Just patience. Patience. As they upgrade, we upgrade. Okay. Uh, how can I get dry sandpaper? I like that system you are showing. That is from Purple Brothers Miami. Oh, he took my three-day class, and now I think he teaches classes. A super good detail. If you're in Miami, look him up. Um, Dr. Beasley's, uh, we've actually already ordered the stuff that I show in my classes. It's just a matter of getting up on the website, but drbeasley's.com. Otherwise, here's the thing. If you, you can't buy directly from Eagle Abrasive, so you have to go to a, a retailer, and the problem you're going to run into is nobody carries everything. Everybody carries a hodgepodge of stuff. So everything you just saw me use, the blocks, the interface pads, the sheets, the discs, the disc we show next Wednesday will be on the Dr. Beasley's website. So that's your one-stop shopping. Okay. All right, let's pull in another one. And, and also, everything's map pricing. So whatever our price is is what everybody else's price is supposed to be, or they get reported. So. Okay. Um, another uh, uh, comment coming in from Instagram. Mercedes-Benz gang on Instagram. Clutch. <laughs> you are clutch. Uh, okay, Matt Z coming in here. Also interested in a good source of sanding paper supplies. Never seem to be able to find a good place. Yeah, so like I just said, the problem with, you know, it's, it's one of those things where it's a good problem to have. If you go up to the Eagle Abrasives website, they got so many different sanding options for all different industries. But trying to find the ones that you need to do this type of work can be, I tried, it can be very difficult to find it like in one place. So the first time I ordered from them, I had to go to like four or five different websites just to get the things I wanted. So I talked to Jim Lefebvre and he says, tell you what, let's just bring in the inventory I show so you can go to drbeasies.com and get everything you see me use in my classes and in videos like this. Okay. All right, this, I don't know when this comment came in, Bebo Ortiz, uh, what number of sandpaper is that? So just give them what, what I, you started at. And what I started with 1,500, finished out, refined with 2,500. Okay, then if you want a middle one, then you'd go? 2,000. 2,000, yeah. And they go all the way to 3,000, I think, in their discs and start down as low as, uh, I don't know, to 200. 80 grit. Yeah, <laughs> really low stuff. Okay, we have another comment coming in here. This one's kind of long, so bear with me. Okay. Daniel Kinder, uh, UWA8555 paint as thin as post-it note. 
Good night, Mike. I know sanding is sometimes just as safe as aggressive polishing, but Lord have mercy. I've seen many 855 5 black GM paint down to thin as around 1.2 mils or 63 microns. You know way yep. that and no way would you sand. Yeah, and, and Daniel, uh, by the way, I got your message. I'll give you a call tomorrow. Uh, but um, at the beginning of this video, what I, I, I did kind of describe why we sand and what we sand. And my strong recommendation is to never sand factory paint because it's so thin as you just elaborated on. But even if you're successfully able to sand it, compound it, and polish it, and not see the base coat on your pads, you know, not make a mistake, you've probably left the clear coat so thin that exposed to the weather, so rain and sun, you'll get premature clear coat failure. So you're not really doing the owner a service. You know, because a lot of people come to me over the years and said, hey, I just bought a brand new Corvette, oh, has God. a lot of orange peel, can you take out that orange peel? And I'm like, well, I could, but and I explained the thing I just said. You know, you have clear coat so thin you're going to hate me later on down the road. Yeah. So it's just, that's just how it is. You just got to live with it. All the sanding I teach is on custom paint jobs, okay? Custom. And, and then in these cases... Or resprays. Resprays. But that means the painter usually puts more clear coat on. Or if it's single stage, puts more single stage on because he knows someone like me is going to sand it and buff it to remove the orange <laughs> peel and create that mere 100% DOI show car finish. Okay, we got another one coming in here. We got Joe Kim. Uh, do you recommend to finish with flat or waffle foam pads? Uh -oh, uh, we're going back to this. Day. Yeah. So, so listen, I'm a flat pad guy. Um, even if you have a waffle pad and you push on it, it becomes flat anyway. And when you go to clean, anything with the design. So anytime you introduce a design, you introduce the potential for a problem. And then when you try to clean it, you got to what? Dig into all the design. With this, you can just go like this and get back to work. And I was actually at Meguiar's when they introduced the diamond cut you know, the diamond cut foam pads. And I was in a marketing meeting and I asked one of the marketing guys, not a guy like me that actually buffs on cars, I says, what's the actual purpose for this? And he says, nothing. It's just changing things up. We've always sold flat pads. And of course, look, they're no longer available, okay? So uh, just stick with a flat pad, okay? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Flat I pad society is what I, you know, flat earthers, I'm a flat padder. Oh, God. <laughs> Okay, we're coming in from Instagram again. We got Keith Touch 1977. Please link that sandpaper. He just mentioned just a minute or two ago about where you can get all the papers. Yep. Okay. Um, oh, wait a minute. I have to visually do this comment. All right, here Discs. we go. Visually do this comment. Sheet. D2D detailer on Instagram. There, that, that's the visual <laughs> interpretation of that. All right, I don't need to be on here anymore. Uh, let's come back over here. Bob Massimino. The pro at work did my 89 cop car and it came out great. Thank you, Bob. We used Bob's uh, car for one of my past Sandy classes. And I'll tell you, this thing came in with some really, really bad orange pill. And, um, and it's just a process of, you know, following the proper steps. I, everything I just showed here. Um, rule of thumb, don't, don't stand any closer to the edge. Um, uh, uh, edge your panel, knock out the edges first, knock out the big flat areas, come back with, always use great abrasive technology. You know, the, I always tell people the most important fact when it comes to polishing paint is the abrasive technology because it's what's touching the paint. I meet a lot of guys that think they're the greatest thing because they're, <laughs> they they're always buffing do. the car. <laughs> but if you think about it, there, there, here's the paint, then you got the product, then the pad, then the tool, then the tool behind the tool. The, the tool, the person, <laughs> is the most furthest thing removed from the action at the surface. The first thing and the most important thing is the stuff touching it, the abrasive technology. Agreed, 100%. Yeah. All right, we have a thumbs, uh, thumb, or okay, perfect, Analdo. And then we have Bob chiming back in again. Zebra 3 is next. Oh, yeah. Uh, for my next class coming up on January 20th, it's a one-day class, paint correction, ceramic coatings. We'll cover uh, engine detailing, glass polishing, a lot of other topics, but it's really focused on extreme prep wash, how to use a rotary polisher, how to use a DA. And uh, Bobby has just bought a 1976 Ford Gran Torino Starsky and Hutch car. And so he says... Is that Zebra 3? What's that? Is that codenamed Zebra 3? That's Zebra 3, yeah. Okay. So that's one of the cars that the class in January 20th will be training on. I got four, five, maybe six cars coming in for that class. No chairs, no sitting. I bring in the real deal for you to train on. Okay. Um, and that was a great segue into this. Uh, Victor, our good old Victor over there, he posted a link in the comments, as you can see on the screen right now, where you can go see all 600 of those pictures. Yes, all 600, 600 of those pictures. pictures. 
of the class. Then, then we have Jack, perfect, or what is it? Perfect Shine of Jacks, which is our buddy. Oh, Russell. Russell, I loved all the photos of the class. He is probably in half of them. No, just joking. <laughs> so I took, uh, me and the people who are teaching class, we took photos of my last three-day class, and I, I, it took me three days to process them all. But I do this for a reason, because when you go to sign up for a class, here's usually what you see. You see a web page or a Facebook ad or an Instagram ad, and you got a dude holding a buffer, <laughs> buffing on a car, usually wearing black gloves, you know, even though you don't need them to wear, hold a buffer. And you got a bolted point list, you know, paint correction, ceramic coating, blah, 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 blah. And that's all you get to see. And then you got to, what, cross your fingers and trust you're actually going to work on cars. And classes aren't the same. Our classes are 100% cars. So we take these pictures and show you what our class looks like because nobody else does. And if they did, what you'd see is people sitting in a chair at a desk in a PowerPoint or working on a demo hood, not a car. So go to drbeezies.com, click on the word blog, and go look at those 600 pictures because it covers every single car and the boat we machine wet sand and machine dry sand, then compound with little pads, polish with foam pads, and ceramic coated. These are the most hands-on classes on planet Earth. Yes, he loves that tagline. <laughs> I've tried talking him out of that tagline many a times. But okay, in the galaxy. It, you, the, now is even... <laughs> look what you started. And look what you... Yeah, all right. <laughs> um, but that was a good segue into the next questions. Be, or, yeah, questions, I guess you could say. Uh, we have Lambert's uh, Auto Detail LLC joining in late. What is the advantage of dry versus wet sanding? Oh, it's real easy. Um, the dry sanding is fast and it's clean. And the reason it's fast is because you can sand, wipe with a dry towel, and you can look at the paint and you can gauge the level of defect removal instantly. When you're wet sanding, you have to stop sanding, wipe it dry. It's usually not dry, so then usually what I do is I blow and try to get that surface dry so now I can gauge. So it's a lot faster because there's Time. no moisture involved. Uh, the sanding discs, if you're using quality stuff, last as long or longer. And of course, you have no slurry going down all the cracks and crevices, no slurry on the floor. So, okay. you know, both, both systems will work. But here, I'll tell you this. I taught hand sanding for Meguiar's and at AutoGeek for going on 20 years. And now I'm all dry sanding. I would never go back to um, wet sand. hand sanding by dry, wet sanding by hand or by machine. The only time I really show machine wet sanding is for the initial cut for gel coat boats. But after the initial cut, we do switch over to dry sanding with Eagle abrasive discs. Okay, that was a great segue. Uh, <laughs> Michael O'Neill coming in again. Can you use wet sanding paper for dry sanding? You got to follow the manufacturer's uh, recommendations. Um, in, in the sanding disc that I just showed here, I believe you can use them wet or dry because I've used the discs wet, so I know that's pr probably accurate. So yes, and always put a little bit of soap in your sanding board. Not a lot, or you'll cause your sanding disc to hydroplane. It won't even cut. So just like a drop or two, and want a little bit of soap in your fresh water supply, like get a bottle like this mixed up, put a couple drops of car wash soap. Is it, it, it lubricates the surface to make sanding smoother, but it helps the paper from loading up. That's why. Okay. And Matt, I love this, and let's see if we can get him to do this. This would be amazing. All right, here we go. You ready? You ready for this one, Mike? Yes. All right. Can you demo how to get black on the pad? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I got a Sharpie marker here. Yeah. Yeah, no. no, we don't want to do that. Yeah, we can do uh, that. No, yeah. no, 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 no. All right. Here we go. We got another one coming in here. Greetings again from Siberia. Ah, Alexander Garvarov. I know I, I destroy your name. I remember you from a while back. Class was amazing. All right. Siberia. Siberia. Need to go there. Then, roadshow. Roadshow. Then, yeah. Then we have another one. Uh, Ed, Edgino. Greetings afternoon from Puerto Rico. Okay. And Kirby is coming in late. Sorry to miss the start today, but we'll watch and talk later. Have a great time. Off on the holidays. And everybody else, you too. That was my guy Kirby. Um, okay, we have uh, e or Eugino. I want to say that's how you say it. Greetings. What thickness tolerance for the clear would be able to do sanding safely? 
Well, it's not how thick the clear is. It goes back to factory paint versus custom paint. So um, in the first part of this video, if you go back to the beginning on YouTube, you watch the whole thing, I explained why we sand and what we sand. And as a professional, I don't sand factory paint because you can leave it so thin you'll get clear coat failure. So you kind of defeat the purpose, you know. Paint jobs cost a lot of money. So you only want to sand custom paint. And here's my personal practice and what I teach in the class. Someone brings you a car and has a custom paint job like this uh, GTO back here. The first thing I do is I ask the owner, do you know who the painter is? If they say yes, can you give me their phone number? I will call them and say, hey, Mike Phillips here. I'm going to be sanding down the 1969 GTO that you painted. Can you tell me how many coats of paint or how many coats of clear coat you put on it so I know how much I have to work with? And usually the painter will say something like this. Oh, man, I just laid it on thick. I put three coats. I put five coats. Or they say, oh, man, we don't put three coats on and we sanded it, so you probably don't got much to work with. But I say I do my research before I start sanding. Now, if I cannot get hold of the painter, then I use a paint thickness gauge and I just use, I use common sense, skill and experience, quality products, okay? It's, and you know, I've never had a problem, but I'm not saying, I don't want to jinx myself, so. Okay, we have a couple more questions and actually there are a couple of really good questions in here. Okay. Uh, high shine detailing, can you tell how many microns removed sandpaper 1500 grit, for example? How many uh, microns you removed? You know, years ago I did a very elaborate test on a, on a demo hood, the one that's over sure in the corner there. And um, after sanding with 2000 grit, compounding and polishing, I took off between 0.4 and 0.4. 0.5 mils. Now, I always go by mils because I can hold a post-it note and wrap my brain around the fact that that's three mils. If I measure in microns, it just doesn't work in my brain. I know everybody across the pond uses microns. I know microns are more accurate. But look, we're talking about... Minuscule <laughs> amounts. Yeah, you know, minuscule amounts. So, but yeah, if you're using quality products, minuscule amounts. So... The, the key really is to use great sanding products, you know, not cheap stuff. The, the good sanding products have uniform abrasive particle placement and size, and that means they leave a uniform sanding mark pattern. Cheap sandpapers have large chunks of abrasives next to small chunks, so when you sand, you leave tracers by hand. If you do it by machine, you get pigtails. So it's just invest in quality products. Okay. And Matt, I tried. I'm, I'm sorry. He said, thanks for trying. Laugh out loud. <laughs> uh, all right. Then we have Michael coming in here. Any beer in that fridge behind you, Yancey? No. 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 There's some black paint on the pad. <laughs> uh, let's see here. There's frescas. Okay, here we go. Rich Nelson. This was the other question I really want to get up. Doesn't a fine mist of water help let sandpaper glide sanding? All right, let me try that again. Doesn't a fine mist of water help let sandpaper glide? Sanding can remove more clear too fast better. I feel dry. Well, I, you know, I, you, personal I, preference. What's so I think what he's trying to say, it, yeah. it, it does let it glide, but does what do you call it? Dry sanding or wet sanding remove faster? Which one? Um, I would have to give the edge at this point to dry sanding. You know, as long as you're taking a clean microfiber towel, wiping the sanding particles off the paint, cleaning the sanding particles off here and going right back at it, I'd say it's a lot faster, it's a lot more aggressive. Wet sanding, you got a lubricant there, so it's gonna cushion it, it's gonna lubricate, it's gonna slow the sanding process down, it might be smoother, but then it goes back to the messy situation. But look, it's personal preference, do it however you want to. In our classes, I teach dry sanding. I used to teach wet sanding, all dry sanding now. Okay, we have two left. We have Lambert's Auto Detail LLC. My heart would sink if Mr. Phelps called to ask me about the car I worked on. Thank you guys for all you do. Thank you, Michael. All uh, right. Well, you could always, you know, what you always tell the people is like, do you have an extra quarter to paint or two? <laughs> <laughs> if this is the guy I'm thinking of, I taught a roadshow class at his location in 2006. I started the whole roadshow concept in the detailing industry when I worked at McGuire's, going to different states and teaching the detailing 101 class I taught in Irvine, you know, and other cities around the United States. I'm happy to see other people have picked up on that now. Okay. <laughs> hey. <laughs> It's the highest form of flattery. Um, Rich Neeland, the clear coat becomes its own abrasive when dry sanding. True, false? Yeah, kind of, you know, but clean your discs often and always sand a manageable size, you know. <laughs> and we are going to leave this with this. This will be the last one. Okay. Um, talking can you just pull it and see the decent All right, all right, maybe I'll have one more. Uh, high shine detailing, sandpaper 1500 grit from Japan, USA, Europe manufacturer isn't the same. Well, look, um, the Eagle, um, the Eagle abrasives by Kovacs is Japanese. It's a Japanese sandpaper. So, uh, I'm not going to argue with anybody, you, you know, find something you like, use it often. 
Okay, and here is the last question, or the last comment. Uh, Jose, coming in here, Jose Salazar. Uh, hello from Caltex in San Antonio, Texas. I gotta do my Texan accent. Uh, taking in consideration how thin paint is how now, can you just do a one stage polishing to give a decent result? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I do it all the time. You know, the goal is, is when you're doing this for your own car or for a customer is manage expectations. You know, if someone brings you a brand new car, like I recently did a brand new Corvette, a brand new Charger Swinger. Swinger! Both of them were very low defects. I did a one-step polish with ceramic coating. Uh, people bring me stuff like this. You know, look, uh, this takes a lot more work. It just depends on what they want, what they're willing to pay for. So about manage people's expectations. Yeah, Always. you did, you have to definitely want to show up to a detail and they're like, oh, I have $200. And you're like, okay, I'm gonna sand out your car. Yeah, you would be losing no. money yeah. so quick. Yeah, no. Materials for a car like this would probably run about $200 for yeah, sanding. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Sanding discs and sheets alone. Yeah, yeah, no, that's definitely. Compounds and polishes 100 bucks. Okay, so. 600 bucks. I hope you guys got your knowledge, Arn. I mean, that was a, a lot of knowledge to drop down really quick in a short amount of time. This, we are actually 10 minutes over um, than what we normally do. But like always, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for your awesome questions. And uh, if, like always, if you have ideas for what you would like Mr. Mike Phillips to show and me to film, I'd be glad to let these guys know as they read their comments also, and we'll try to get some of those in there because I think it'd be really fun to see what you guys want to do. And next week, we're going to flip this car around and work on the door. We're going to show machine dry sanding using this really cool Flex Cordless DA sander and, of course, the Pixie, which originally came out as a paint polisher, but the first time I saw it, I go, man, that's going to make the best little sander in the world. You know, three-inch, two-inch, and one-inch disc for machine sanding. All right. So... Now you know what next week is, no surprise. Sorry, we can't gift wrap it. <laughs> <laughs> and for information on all the classes, go to drbeezus.com. Look for a text link that says classes, click on it, you can get all the information there. Well, there you go. Do I have a big old picture of you? No. No? Oh, Pictures good. of cars. It might break the internet. <laughs> all right, say bye, Mike. See you later. Alligator.